Thank you, Sean. And I, I want to thank uh, everyone here and Duke and Digital Public for welcoming me and, and starting with a way to ground things in real world, world problems because that is literally what I have um, to share with you today. And what I'm hoping is that you'll hear my story and think about how your wisdom and your knowledge can apply solutions to this problem. Um, so I, I want to say I first met Sean, I think it was in a coffee shop, and uh, I was so afraid last year when I first found the things that I found. Um, and I was thankful to you for, you know, just helping me to navigate. There have been quite a few people in this room who've already kind of rolled up their sleeves to help. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by telling my story and the story of my online community, my support group. And I'm going to talk about how I learned how to hack my support group and uh, you know, fell it down a rabbit hole of becoming an accidental hacker and how this um, you know, affects the questions we have in the bigger, bigger picture. So the third thing was talking about how we need a path forward for governing data and how we can work today to find solutions. So um, this is me. I, I started this work as a patient advocate. Um, in all of the places my genome could have gone right and could have gone wrong, my future changed with a T and a G that somehow got switched and placed 181 of my BRCA1 gene, BRCA1. What that meant, I have what many call the breast cancer gene. We all have the breast cancer gene. I have a mutation. And 14 years ago, physicians told me that I had up to an 87% chance of developing breast cancer and up to a 60% chance of developing ovarian cancer in my lifetime. We call ourselves previvors. And back in the beginning, I didn't have any support. I couldn't navigate the healthcare system. And in fact, many people who share my identity struggled with the same thing. At least we have choices, they would say. You know, knowledge is power. You have choices as opposed to somebody who already gets cancer. And I can tell you, yes, we do have choices. And I want better choices than removing body parts. I want better options to screen for, treat, and prevent cancer so my children don't have to do the same things that I did and make the same choices that I made. But I have to tell you, I kept waiting for these choices and innovations to come along. I kept waiting for big tech, and let me tell you, I started my career in big tech in Silicon Valley. I kept waiting for healthcare and, and all of these innovations over the last 14 years to trickle down to make an impact on me, my family, and my community. I was passionate about data sharing, uh, especially with BRCA and figuring out how that fit into solutions. But honestly, you know, the solutions really never came and nothing has, has really changed for us over the last 14 years. And I asked myself, why? Well, I'll tell you what did come along for me. An incredible support group of strong, brave, beautiful women who are leaders and organizers all over the world. And as this community emerged, we, ha we learned that we had a shared identity. And when you have a shared identity in a support group, I can tell you it's an Im incredibly liberating, freeing thing to know that you can be vulnerable with other people when not even your own family understands what you're going through. When you have to make life-changing decisions and you're dealing with grief and fear, and not even the healthcare system sometimes can understand what you're going through, but these women did. And as it turns out, millions of Americans use social media for support and connection, and we want that because this group was a lifeline for us. Um, my, m my experience with this group was um, from 2013 till last year, uh, pretty amazing, and then something changed. March 2018, Cambridge Analytica uh, news broke, and I knew something was really wrong. I started reading about how data could be scraped to create psychological profiles without consent, and, and my gut was telling me I needed to ask myself a simple question. So I asked, well, what are the implications of this privacy problem for my own support group? of women who are sharing intimate details and photos and, and pictures of their healing experience on Facebook. What is this going to do for us? And what, what, what do we need to know about 
how this might impact us. And I kept waiting for announcements to come out, but realized that I just kind of had to use my background in technology to, to essentially become a hacker. <laughs> And so, so um, it turns out I knew just enough to be a little bit dangerous. Um, and, and my foray into hacking was a total accident. Um, you see, when I started my career in Silicon Valley, I learned about how APIs work, I understand data flows, and I can go and create developer accounts and start to understand uh, tools for data scraping and, and all the things that might be used against our community. And that's what I did. And as I found this uh, research, I want to say in my defense, I was left unsupervised because I didn't know <laughs> at, at the beginning what, what hacking was or responsible disclosure. And I was very lucky to find a security researcher who's actually uh, advised Congress on health data breaches and understands the importance of health data privacy. I brought my research to him. And he came back to me two days later saying, you have found one of the, the largest health data breaches in history. This is very dangerous. And it actually is a, a flaw in the security architecture of Facebook's group uh, platform that can be um, exploited at scale. Millions of people can be affected. So you can imagine this it, at first was uh, some of the most terrifying news I've ever heard. And it began the, the start of uh, learning and, and bringing in experts um, and my own crash course in uh, responsible disclosure, white hat hacking, and understanding how to navigate what's called a zero day vulnerability. So we called the vulnerability sick girl, strict inclusion criteria, group reverse lookup attack. And, and I'm not gonna get into the technical details here, but essentially it's a way to scrape lists at scale from outside of a group and attach a clinical fact. So for example, if you have BRCA, along with a list of all the information about you on Facebook through their, their back end. So you know, it included employer, company, um, the, the email address if you've, if you've um, shared your phone number, et cetera. And so as I was um, tasked with going to different experts and, and putting together a, a a vulnerability report, we brought this to Facebook in the beginning, submitted um, SQL to them to, to really make sure that they understand what the problem is. And we were ho expecting them after I learned all this incredible, um, you know, information about white hat hacking, I learned um, we can submit to Facebook. And that began the timeline of where I am today. So we developed this 30 page report, showed it to them. And over time, we continued to try to figure out how they were going to fix the problem. Um, but what ended up happening is we, we only got a partial fix, and then we saw, started to see real harm. And I'm going to very quickly go through these examples of harm, but um, you know, one example is predatory behavior in addiction support groups. Um, I had a first uh, row seat, unfortunately, to a group of 15,000 women um, that was doxxed scraped and deleted quietly, and it was all swept under the rug by Facebook. Um, a, a grief support group had a hacker take over their admin profile, and this is actually a different type of attack. Um, but as I started seeing these things unfold over the past year, I understood, you know, nobody's coming to save us but us. We have to do something, and, and I have to be part of the solution because even when I'm going to the people above us who can fix it, to the people in power, they're not doing something about it. Well, in my own community, you know, there's the risk of being docked, scraped, and deleted um, and terrorized like the other groups that we've seen, but there's also the bigger prog problem of data aggregators taking the very mechanism we've used for social support against us to deny us health care and benefits or raise our rates or employers um, using this information to deny us jobs if they think we're too much of a health risk or too expensive. So what do we do about this? Well, um, this started a, a further um, escalation. We made a um, FTC complaint that ended up starting a congressional inquiry. It's been quite a year. Um, the FTC settlement failed, unfortunately, to address any rights or privacy uh, protections for patients in these support groups. And all I am seeking are solutions and a path forward. 
So while the FTC has not meaningfully um, been able to protect us, now I am asking myself, well, how can we protect ourselves? Um, you know, we, we're in an interesting place in history, I think. Um, I, I think back to uh, what governance means and why it applies to me and why it's relevant. I, I never thought these issues of, you know, abstract data sharing would come to this, but it has. If we are going to fix this, I think we start practicing the solutions now that we want to see in the world. And for me, that is collective self-governance. I want to declare independence from Facebook. I want the right for our community to self-govern our groups. And I want to do this in a way that is independent from Facebook, that allows us to chart our own destiny, that gives our community a set of rights. I kept looking over this past seven years, over this past year, to people in power, to people above us, to fix things. And I often hear in these policy discussions about governing data, um, so many examples in the abstract. We need to ground these things in real world solutions now. And I would love to work with everybody in this room to figure this out because what I have to do at the end of today is go back to the people that I care about and love so much, this online community that's been a lifeline for me, and tell them what do we do next. I hope you'll help me, and I hope, hope you'll help me find solutions. Thank you.